Hi friends, in this video I will give you some easy tips to remember the Black Scholes and Metten formula. The specifically the D1 and D2 part which is nightmare for a lot of students and students feel intimidated by this particular formula and they have the question to should we they like should they remember the formula or not. So we will try to address all these points. Before we move into our discussion, I have some news for you. So the news is like pre-booking for Palkana Defense books is open now. So you have to visit this page. I will drop the link of this page in the, uh, the description of this video. You can simply check the page and you have to fill this particular form. You cannot directly purchase this book right now. You have to first apply for the pre-booking and then only you can, we will give you the uh, option to buy this book. So the speciality of this book is like we designed this book or um, like the study material study notes uh, from the students point of view and specifically for the self study students. So in this book you will see the content is presented in very graphical manner. So it is easy for you to remember the key points like this is the conditional probability chart which is presented here. If you just read this chart you will be able to understand each and everything and then if you see like there are a lot of things which you need to remember need to remember for the exam purpose and specifically in the quant section for those type of content like or for those topics we presented everything in very tabular format very extracted format like just for the example in hypothesis testing you need to remember some rules which are generally not provided in any book here we provided everything in rules format okay so rules the tables are created here so you can simply check the rules read the rules and you will be able to remember this is that particular part here you can see complete table is presented here so you have to always like at the time of revision this table will help you a lot one thing so this is about the quants book the major um, like the biggest feature of this like falcon study material is the pre-highlighted content which is mainly for the theory topics okay we are not pre-highlighting everything uh, it is the pre-highlights are mainly for the theory topics just like this this is the introduction of derivatives from the book number three here you can see we made the pre-highlights to the text now if you just read this red text you will be able to understand the concept so that was the goal of pre-highlighting it so pre-highlighting will help you in two manners so first is the revision time so you can simply read these red highlights and you'll be able to understand or you'll be able to revise the concept in very faster manner so that's the first advantage second is when you are doing the cell study sometimes you miss on the key points or the very important points and because of that like you miss on the question okay you miss the question in the exam so we ensure that every such point is already pre-highlighted and you will never miss on or you we, we ensure that you will never miss on any key point or the important point if you are using the falcon study material with this book this is not the standalone content like uh, this is not the like only book type of thing so with this book we will provide you the complete self study solution with this you will get 23 mock test question bank uh, revision material like the revision booklet and with this you will also get the forum access where uh, i myself or the other faculties who are certified members will reply you to your queries so you can get your doubts resolved by experts or um, the, those who are certified FRMs who have a lot of experience of exam. So that's very uh, good for you. So I would recommend you to fill this form if you are interested in the Falcon study material. And uh, one more thing, this is only and only for August and November students. For May students, uh, we might not be able to uh, like meet the deadlines. Okay, right now it is already uh, March and your exam is just two months away that's why we are not giving this option to may students but those are the students of falcon edifin like those who are taking classes for them the books are available okay so for indian students the printed material as well as the digital material and one more thing once you purchase the subscription of this book you will be provided with the option to purchase a physical copy the printed copy at the nominal cost this is applicable only for the indian students okay so please check the link and uh, see or review this book please provide the feedback okay so positive negative both are welcome i like the feedback and definitely if there are any feedbacks we will definitely improve the content in that okay so now let's come back to our discussion which is the black shells and metal model now here the black shells and metal model is very simple in the first part which is the call option price or the put option price the first structure of this particular part now here we have call price i will discuss only call price you can adopt this particular this equation for the put price as well 
so for call price we have s0 minus x okay so s0 minus x this is the same formula which we use for the payoff in case of the call option right so s0 minus x because just a second because we are valuing this option at this point and the strike price is applicable for future at the time of expiration we need to take the present value of this okay this part is not difficult for to remember or it is easy to remember okay so s0 minus pv of x which is also equal to the intrinsic value of the option s0 is multiplied by nd1 and pv of x the present value of x is multiplied by nd2 now the problem is the main problem for the students is the d1 and d2 how to calculate the d1 and d2 and if you are able to calculate the d1 automatically you will be able to calculate the d2 because d2's formula is not that difficult because it is very simple d1 minus sigma under root t right so here first we will see how to calculate the d1 so this is the formula which is ln of s upon x plus bracket rf plus sigma square divided by 2 multiplied by t divided by sigma under root t and this becomes slightly difficult for students now what you can do to remember this particular formula always remember if you have this type of formula don't try to remember the formula as a whole break down this formula we will break down this formula in three parts first second and third part so these are the three parts for the formula okay now let's see how to remember the individual form part what we will do here is we will call this part as a this is b and this is c okay now let's check one by one a is equal to ln of s0 upon x let me change the ink a is equal to ln of s0 upon x this is the same formula like your return formula return calculation formula well you take the st divided by s0 and you press the ln and you get the return this formula is similar to that now here if you are like if you are confused with this part so simply on like remember on calculator you have to press the s0 s0 as in say the stock price is 100 and strike price is 90 then you have to simply visualize it press s0 or enter the value for s0 that is the 100 divided by 90 ln simple s0 upon x ln right so this is easy to remember this part is really easy to remember so you don't have to worry about it you will remember it if you see just this much part okay now let's talk about the b b is the critical part here that is the rf plus sigma square divided by 2 multiplied by t how to remember this part I have like simple statement for this to remember okay so if you want to remember this part you have to remember this statement the statement is risk free rate or interest rate so I say it like this take interest rate which is in your mind risk free rate and add half of the variance half of the variance adjusted for time adjusted for time now we have you know like maybe you have watched some that cookery shows where they say like take the bowl and then add half like or pinch of salt like this so take the interest rate and add half of the variance half of the variance meaning Sigma square is variance divided by 2. That is the half of the variance. Risk free rate or interest rate add half of the variance and time adjust for it. Always remember when you time adjust variance, you will always multiply it with t. It is always multiplied by t. Sigma square is never multiplied by under root of t. Sigma square is always multiplied by t. So you have to time adjusted time adjusted adjustment is done by multiplying t simple take the now just close your eyes and uh, listen to my statement and try to visualize the formula the b structure of it 
take the interest rate that is the risk free rate and add half of the variance time adjust rate half of the variance is sigma square divided by 2 half of the variance you can also take it like 0.5 multiplied by sigma square it is one and the same thing right now next part is the c in the c part we have sigma root t that is the standard deviation time adjust rate which is volatility adjusted for time and always remember volatility will be adjusted with under root of time why because always remember first we calculated variance and volatility is itself under root of variance because volatility is under root of variance and variance is adjusted with t time adjustment for variance is done with t so for volatility you use under root of t this part is not very difficult to remember because sigma root t you are going to use multiple times in your curriculum so you will always remember sigma is always multiplied by under root of t and sigma square is always multiplied by t right so first we have now three parts ready you have to simply go with a plus b divided by c right now let's start with the a i will just hide this particular part we'll start with the a what is the a a was ln of s upon x right this was easy to remember plus a plus b right so for b we will again repeat our statement take the interest rate and add half of the variance time adjust rate divided by take the volatility and time adjust it like this and your d1's formula is ready d2's formula is again very simple it is d1 minus volatility time adjusted for like time adjusted in simple terms right once you get the d1 and d2 always remember the result from d1 or d2 is equal to your z value z value for now i'll just assume the d1 is equal to 1.25 and what should you what you should do now so if you get this 1.25 you have to open your z table okay the distribution normal distribution table in that you have to find one that is positive one never check the negative one check the positive one and then you will get obviously 1.2 in z table once you get the 1.2 check for the 0 0.05 if you don't like understand how to check the z table I have also a video on the Z table, how to check the Z table, check that video and simply look for it. So ND1 is simply that probability, simply the value of this Z value. Okay. So D1 and ND1 is the probability that is the Z values probability. Simple and in similar fashion, you will do it for D2. Now the very important question, do you need to remember this formula? Okay. So in my experience starting say 2026 till 2022 i never saw any ex any exam of frm part one where students were asked to calculate the d1 completely like ga provided every information and now you have to fuse like input everything and then calculate the d1 and then nd2 and then so on so i never saw this particular situation in any exam so first answer can be okay you don't need to remember it as such but please remember in your frm part two you will meet the same formula or say brother of this formula, which is the Merton model, which is used for the calculation of the probability of default and loss given default. Okay. So for that, for those formulas, sorry, probability of default for those formulas in Merton model, GAP will ask specific question on probability of default and you will require, or you need to remember that formula. So it is always better to remember at this particular stage only. And also you should be on safer side and you should not be afraid of these type of things. Right. So always remember like to know or break down the formula. Always remember if you have the complicated concept or formula, do it brick by brick. Just think about the small part, then small part, and then small part, and then try to combine those parts with this methodology you'll be able to always break down any difficult concept right so that's all about how to remember the bsm formula and how to use it in the equation this is very easy you can now again uh, do the same for uh, put option as well so for put option okay again you have to calculate the nd1 and nd2 and simply reduce it from one so one minus nd1 and one minus nd2 and you're good to go right so that's all about the bsm formula see you in the next video Bye bye